Uh, in the back on the pulpit, there is the newsletter for January, so feel free to pick one up. But we also um, have finally been able to get back into the church email account, and so they have been emailed out. If you did not get it but would like to get it through email, please let me know, and we can double-check with your email address on file. Um, and because um, we're working through this, there are some email addresses listed in there that do not have a name associated with it so you know like bubba gumtrip at gmail.com i don't know who that is um so if you just would like clarification on your email to receive the newsletter please let us know any other announcements Jones? super bowl of Kane, and when is this in uh super bowl right what minute it's february 6th right the first sunday first sunday in february all right and this money goes to the church our size here, uh, we do right far for this community. We do real well. Hey, anybody else have any announcements? Yes. Yes. I'd just like to remind everyone, I think most of you while we're here, uh, we're updating the prayer list on the second Sunday. Please go through the prayer list, mark out, you're welcome to give it to Kim or myself, and we'll try to keep things updated and uh, more effective. Uh, and after church, you can catch one of us or before the board meeting, whatever works for you all. All right, so on the second Sunday of each month, we're going to try to update the prayer list. Is that correct, Susan? Yes. And you can mark it on the prayer list in your bulletin. You can add to it or you can mark names out and make sure Kim or Susan gets it. And if you can't do that, you can probably put an offering plate and we'll see that it gets uh, to the right people. So we need to update the uh, 
a prayer list second Sunday of each each month. Any other announcements that need to be made? All right. Uh, grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you very much. All right. Let's go to, uh, if we would please stand and sing our first hymn this morning. And it's hymn number 56, not 356, okay? And it is, to God be the glory. We're going to stand and sing all verses. And that's hymn 56, not 356. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for another beautiful day of life. We thank you, Lord, for allowing us to come to your house today to receive your word and to give thee thanks and praise for all the many blessings you have bestowed upon each one of us. We especially thank you, God, for that gift of salvation that your Son and our Savior Jesus paid for on Calvary. Father, I ask that you be with Melissa as she delivers your message today. And help us, Lord, to take your message and spread it to those who hunger and thirst for your word. Father, give us the strength to deal with the everyday sinful temptations that we face. Help us, Father, to be better stewards of thy work. And thank you, Father, for your son, Jesus, who died on the cross for our sins. And Lord, thank you for teaching us that most perfect prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever.
may be seated. At this time, I'm going to ask if anyone has a, a moment of sharing. Anybody have anything they'd like to share with the church this morning? Donna? That's Chris Leonard. Chris Leonard. Anybody else? I'd like y'all to keep my good friend Tim Scott in your prayers. Uh, he's having troubles getting his medication lined out, uh, and he's at uh, Wake right now. He's been in the hospital for several days, uh, scheduled to have procedure done Friday, but they had to cancel that. And uh, so they, had, they took him in yesterday, and he came out, and his wife, Lisa, said he seems to be doing a little better. Uh, but just keep Tim in your prayer. He's had a, a long haul here. Uh, he's in good spirits, but just keep him in your prayer, and his family, too, as his daughter goes back to college uh, today. Anybody else? Okay, if there's no other moments of sharing, I'd like to do the morning meditation, which I always call the call to worship. Um, I've got a couple of scriptures here. The first one I want to read, if I don't lose it, is comes from uh, 1 Peter chapter 1, uh, verses 1 and 2, or excuse me, verse 3. Let us give thanks to God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Because of his great mercy, he gave us new life by raising Jesus Christ from the dead. This fills us with living hope. And the other one is from 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 17 through 18. All right. When anyone is, let's see, excuse me. When anyone is joined to Christ, he is a new beginning. The old is gone and new has come. All this is done by God, who through Christ changed us from enemies into his friends and gave us the task of making others his friends also. May God bless the scripture that's read this morning. All right, if we could please now stand and sing hymn number, oops, excuse me, hymn number 406, Wonderful Words of Life, all verses please.
please be seated. <clears throat> At this time, I'm going to read the names and concerns that have been placed upon our prayer list here at First Christian Church in Richlands. And if there's a name or concern that's not on this prayer list, please lift these names up and concerns during our morning prayer. And I always remember, God will answer all prayers. If they're according to His will. That's what we got to keep in mind. And also remember, we have an ongoing prayer list uh, as well. All right, for uh, January the 9th, 2022. And this one was just given to me before service started. They saw this on uh, the social media. Uh, family of Kelly Grossclose, family of Buck Sargent, family of Donna Casey, family of Virginia Jean Lowe, family of Mike Lawson, family of Pete Bentley, family of Scotty Holmes, family of Sherry Jones, Alpha Potter, Amanda Coleman, Ann Cornell Cordell Arno, Art Novak, Bill Duff, Carol Altizer, Debbie Spencer, Wayne King, Diana Mead, Dylan Mead, Donna Cantrell, Elizabeth Thomas, Flora Lawson, Ernest Lane, Franklin Lawson, Jean Potter, Heather McLaughlin, Jean Wright, or Glenn Wright Jr., Global Pandemic Patients, Hugh Cook, Irene and Eli uh, Bailey, Jackie Blevins, James Lane, Jamie Stanley, Irene and Jeffrey Mills, or that's, yeah, uh, James Church, Jeff Carter, Jimmy, Jim Hayden, Jimmy Grindstaff, Johnny Avon, Karen Murphy, Kelly McLean, Kenneth Barnett, Lee Wampler, Lauren Murphy, Madison Hartner, Main Street School, Larry Puckett, Michelle Harmon, Patty Pruitt, Robin Cunningham, Roy Dale King, Sadie Mackey, Shonda Richardson, Stephanie, Tazewell County Public Schools, Terry Blacken, Tornado Victims, Trudell Alice, the Ernest Family, Tim Scott, Unspoken Requests, Wanda Lawson, Mary Fritzgerald, Eddie Cruy, Brenda Lawson, Zach Yates, and Dave Simmons. At this time, Reverend Melissa will now lead us in our prayer. Let us come before the Lord in prayer. Righteous Father, it is with so much praise and thanksgiving on our hearts and our minds that we enter into your holy house of worship this morning. We are at the beginning of a new year, a year full of endless possibilities of all that we will do to help build up your kingdom. There is so much excitement in our lives for the blessings that will unfold in ways that are mystical to us. And we pray, dear God, that we would allow our hearts and our minds to be open to the indwelling of your Holy Spirit. And that as we continue in this new year, that we would go where you call us to go that we would do as you have called us to do, that we would do all that we can, dear God, to help build up your kingdom upon this earth and continue to herald the birth of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. We celebrate today Epiphany Sunday as when the Magi arrived at the home of the Christ child. We can't even begin to imagine how long their journey was what they experienced as they traveled. But we marvel, dear God, at their dedication to following the star, to finding the Christ child. And we pray, dear God, that we, like the Magi, would also be determined in our faith journey, that no matter what lies ahead, what we might experience, that we would continue to push on to meet Christ in every aspect of our lives and in the world around us. 
We come together this morning, dear God, and we have so many concerns on our hearts and our minds. We pray for those on our prayer list, those who have been recently added in our ongoing prayer list. We pray for those silent requests that are known only to us, and we lift them all up before you in prayer. We pray, dear God, that we would lift up before you also all of the doubts, the fears, the anxieties that we have. May we turn them over to you and leave them with you. May we not try to take them back and control more than what we are able. We pray, dear God, for all the people we know and love who are hurting, who are grieving, who can't seem to find their way no matter which direction they try. May your Holy Spirit be with all of your children, helping to ease the pain and the grief of those who are mourning, helping the lost ones find direction. May you be here with us, dear God, as we continue to herald the news of the birth of our Savior, Jesus Christ. We pray that we would continue, dear God, to go forth proclaiming the good news that for unto us a child has been born, and he is Christ the Lord and that with him our salvation has come into this world. Help us, dear God, to never tire of sharing the gospel message that we know to be so right and true. Help us to forever proclaim our faith in you and the mighty works that you have done for all of your creation. We pray, dear God, that you would continue to lead us and guide us and bless us through all things that all that we do be done in love and in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, has been born, and he comes to save all of humankind. He also bids all of humankind to come and dine at this holy table that he has set for us. Jesus Christ invites any and all who profess him to be the Messiah, God, Savior of the world, to partake of this heavenly feast. Would you please stand and join with me in our communion hymn, Room at the cross for you, we will sing all verses and we will stand on verse 3. not going to play.
on the night he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is given for you. Take of it, eat of it, and do so in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant poured out in my blood for the remission of sins. Take of it, all of you, and drink of it. And as often as you do, do so in remembrance of me. Let us pray. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for the opportunity and the purpose and reason to gather around this thy table. Lord, we thank you for Jesus that died a cruel death on the cross for all us sinners. A man that lived a perfect life gave it up so freely that each one of us will have an opportunity for eternal life if we so choose. Lord, we thank you for this bread that you provided us, which symbolically represents our Lord's broken body that hung on the cross for each one of us. Lord, I just ask as each one of us partake of this bread, that we receive its spiritual nourishment to its fullest, with open minds and open hearts. Lord, I just ask that you continue to be with each one of us, that you continue to lead us and guide us and direct us in all that we do. And above all, Lord, save us in the end. As I continue the prayer for the cup, Lord, we know this cup is symbolic of our Lord and Savior's shed blood on the cross for the forgiveness of our sins. Heavenly Father, we can, be, we can never be thankful enough for that sacrifice that you gave so that we might spend eternity with you if we so choose. Please lead us and guide us daily. Keep us safe from all harm. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. <clears throat> as often as you eat of this bread and you drink of this cup, you proclaim the living Lord's death until he comes again. Let us have a word of prayer for the offering. Heavenly Father, we know that you are the giver of every good and perfect gift upon all that you have brought into being. We pray, dear God, as we give back to you some of what you have given to us, that these gifts might be used to help build up your kingdom and proclaim that for unto us a child has been born. Help us, dear God, to use these gifts according to your perfect will, and may we go forth as your faithful stewards in this world. In your son's name we pray. Amen. after yeah. see if he makes it um, our third king uh, is attending his grandson Wyatt's dedication so we'll do the special after the sermon today our scripture lesson for today comes from Matthew chapter 2 verses 1 to 12 the Magi visit the Messiah after Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose, and we have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was greatly disturbed, and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem, in Judea, they replied, for this is what was written by the prophet. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel." 
Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me so that I too may go and worship him. After they heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen rose ahead of them, and it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down, and they worshipped him. They opened their treasures and presented to him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they return to their country by another route. May God add a blessing to the reading and hearing of his word. Today we celebrate Epiphany, the day recognized for when the Magi arrived at the home of the Christ child. What started as a journey to follow a never-seen-before star led these magi to the Messiah, to God manifest in human form. With adoration for who God is and where he led them, we are told that the magi fell to their knees in worship of God and the Christ child before them and presented to the Christ the gift of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Do you believe in horoscopes? This idea that the alignment of the stars and the planets in the sky, what position Mars is in, whether or not Mercury is in retrograde, has any influence over what happens in your life, whether it be good or bad? I will occasionally read my horoscope, but I do not put little, I put little faith in horoscopes. I am a Libra, and yes, there are some characteristics to that sign that loudly resound within my personal life, but I also feel that those characteristics are so sweepingly broad that they can encompass half the people living in the world. I think horoscopes are occasionally fun to read, but that's about it. There are people in the world who are like me, and they read their horoscope on rare occasions, and they laugh at what it says. And there are people in this world who read their horoscope daily and firmly believe in what their star sign is and what that means for their life. The Chinese culture, as we know, has the Chinese zodiac calendar that cycles through every 12 years, and the Chinese culture puts a lot of faith in their zodiac calendar. As it says online, Chinese people believe that a person's horoscope, personality, and love compatibility are closely associated with his or her zodiac sign determined by his or her birth year. But this idea of the position of the stars and how they influence our lives is not really all that uncommon. There is the ever-popular idiom that something is written in the stars to indicate that something has long been foreshadowed. And in literature, in Shakespeare's play, Romeo and Juliet, we are told several times throughout the play that Romeo and Juliet are a pair of star-crossed lovers, once again indicating that this pairing was destined long before either one of them were born. In the time of Christ, people took the alignment of the stars with absolute seriousness. The ancient Israelite culture firmly believed that the stars you were born under completely dictated your life, all of your actions, your life expectancy, when you would marry, how many kids you would have, everything. And from today's reading from the Gospel of Matthew, we see travelers from a foreign land who clearly put a lot of stock in what a star had to say as they followed it for several thousand miles across the desert in search for what they later found to be the Christ child. It is traditionally assumed that there are three magi because there were three gifts given to the Christ child. We read that these magi are learned astrologers who traveled from the east in search of this mythical Christ child. And it is widely accepted that the magi come from the Orient and the Orient to Jerusalem was a few thousand miles. Traveling at night when the star was visible... 
and not being able to travel every night because there are times when it's overcast and cloudy and the stars are not visible. And we have to consider the fact that the stars and their relative position in the sky changes depending on what season it is. We are all familiar with this as we know that Orion's belt is one of the most recognizable constellations, but we can only see it for about half the year, if that. This journey of the Magi was undoubtedly tiresome, cumbersome, fraught with danger, and to some people they probably saw it as nothing more than a fool's errand. But still these Magi pushed on, and they were rewarded for their efforts. It is estimated that this journey of the Magi took two or three years, but at last these Magi, these travelers from the east, were able to behold the Christ child, to see before them God made incarnate. To the Magi, it did not matter how long their journey took, what they had to go through, what potential dangers might lie ahead, because they knew that the star they were following would lead to something significant. We too, like the Magi, are to follow the star. And not the star of our horoscope, but the star that God has placed in our lives to seek the Christ. We are called to follow our star, to seek the Christ, wherever that star may lead us. You know, much like the Magi, there were several companions with them. We follow our star, and there might be a few people with us on this journey. There might be a whole bunch. We might at times be alone. Sometimes we'll be traveling with people that we know. Sometimes we'll be traveling with people we've never met before. We might, as we follow our star, know exactly where it is that we are going, or it might be a journey to some place completely unexpected and very unfamiliar. But we have to go. Because God calls us to go. He calls us to follow the star of faith that has been placed in our lives. We follow our star and we will see how that star will lead us into a deeper relationship with Christ. These magi, when they began their journey, they had no experience with God or with the Christ child. They were learned men on a long trip, and look at where they ended up at the end of their journey. On their knees, in the presence of God. From pagan worshipers to believers in the triune God. We all know about Christ. We know that he was the Savior born in Bethlehem, who grew up to become the Savior of the cross in Jerusalem. But when we follow the star that God has placed in our lives, how it is that we know Christ will become much deeper, more meaningful. Our faith in Christ and our understanding of who he is and what he has done will intensify. Our faith in the works of God will be even more profound. We won't just know about Christ but we will actually know Christ on a personal, intimate level. We follow our star, and we will appreciate how entirely unique our journey is to us and how our journey shapes us. There are commercials on TV for, I believe it's University of Phoenix, and the tagline is, here you are more than just a number. We are more than just a number to God, and the journey that God has us on is tailored to fit what our needs are and where it is that we are in our faith. There might be others who are experiencing a similar journey, but it will not be the same. Our journey will be unique to us, and how amazing is that? But not only is our journey unique to us individually, but our journey will shape us in ways that we never imagined. We have been called to leave the comforts of our little bubbles, to follow a star, and to be thrown radically into situations where we might feel incredibly uncomfortable. Situations that we don't think we will ever make it through. But we are called to follow our star and to allow ourselves and our faith to be challenged and to be changed. We follow our star and we will be surprised by where it takes us and we will be surprised at our capacity to do the seemingly impossible. 
God wants us to follow him, to trust in him and go where he is leading us. To do so benefits us, but more importantly, it pleases God. Think about what would happen to your life if you had this incredible opportunity for a journey of faith before you and you just didn't go. Think about what you would be missing out on. Have you ever had an incredible opportunity to present itself to you and you passed? How many of you then overanalyze your decision about saying no? How many of you wish that you could go back and change your mind and just say yes, and then you wondered how differently your life would have been if only you had given a different answer? This is what God calls the Magi to do, and it is what God calls us to do, to stop overanalyzing what is asked of us, to stop worrying about what might happen. We are being called to open ourselves up to God and believe that we can do whatever it is he has asked of us to do, to take a step of faith and to begin our journey into the unknown. We are not to worry about what might happen. We are not to try and count the cost of what we think we are giving up. There is absolutely no making of a pro-con list. We go. We believe in God, and we believe in ourselves as a child of God and what our God is asking us to do. We follow our star, and we find new direction for our life, the path that God needs us all to be on. The Magi followed a star, and they found God. The path that they thought their lives were going to be was forever altered. They were no longer men living in a pagan land, worshiping whatever deities just happened to be there. The Magi went on a journey, and they were no longer the same. When we follow our star, when we find the Christ, we will be put on a new path. When we lay before Christ our worries, our fears, our anxieties, we open before him our hearts and our minds, and he will lead us and guide us. Christ will put us on a path, and he will give to us the wisdom and the courage to continue in the new direction that he is sending us on. We will be pointed in a new direction, a direction that offers us new spiritual insight into who we are, who God is, how it is that our faith has changed, and how we have been changed because of it. One of my family members, Kate, has a Facebook page that she started back when the kids, my nieces and nephew, were little called the Wandering Wise Men. It is her Christian alternative to Elf on the Shelf. Using playful little people, Kate has... Balthazar, Gaspar, Melchior, and Hezekiah the camel follow the star every year from the first Sunday of Advent through to Epiphany. Much like the elf on the shelf, the wise men and the camel find themselves in humorous situations like getting stuck in the Christmas tree, scared by the family dog, getting distracted by the smell of homemade cookies. But my nieces and my nephew enjoy the hunt for the wise men and the camel every day. And Kate posts daily Facebook pictures about the daily trials that the wise men and Hezekiah the camel find themselves in. But despite the circumstances that the wise men and Hezekiah find themselves in, every day they continue their journey to find the star. They might get delayed by the shining lights of the tree or the delicious cookies that have just come from the oven. But the theme of the wandering wise men every year is their determination to follow the star to find the Christ. Their journey is full of obstacles and distractions, but the wise men and Hezekiah the camel will not let themselves be deterred from their journey. God calls for each of us to take a journey of faith, to seek the Christ. But are we allowing ourselves to make that journey? Or are we letting ourselves be waylaid by fears and anxieties we have about setting off into the unknown? Or are we noticing the direction that the people of the world seem to be moving in, which is contrary to the direction our star is calling us to go, and rather than following our star, we sort of get washed up in the mob of the people moving in an entirely different direction, and we just allow ourselves to be carried along? 
Or further yet, are we merely content to sit and stay exactly where we are because where we are is our comfort zone? And while God is calling us to follow the star, at least in our own little bubble, everything is safe and we know where we stand, so we just stay. David Albert Farmer wrote, The Magi did not embrace Judaism and had no conversion experience before they began following the star that eventually led them to the home of Mary, Joseph, and Jesus. They simply followed a star that they had seen the star that God placed in the heavens before them, and they were rewarded for their risks. They saw the one whom God had appointed to redeem the world. The story of the Magi teaches us that God is not limited by or obligated to work within the structures of anything human-made, religious institutions included. It also teaches us that we are to follow our own star, even a faintly flickering one. The star might take us to a place where we can learn more about God than we would ever learn if we stayed within our present theological framework, as if God has said everything he ever will say. In the end, even Jesus himself did not fit very well into the way things were, And though it cost him his life, he dared to follow God to places where everyone else told him that God would not and could not go. God calls us to follow our star, to seek the Christ. Are we actually going on that journey, or are we content just to sit and stay where we are? How are you seeking the Christ? We are invited to be like the Magi. These wise and learned men did not know where they were going, but they knew to keep looking for God and to trust in his providence for their journey. When the road ahead was dangerous, they did not go back. When it was cloudy and they couldn't always see the star, they did not go back. They kept seeking the Christ, just as we are to keep seeking the Christ by following our own star. The Magi, these learned astrologers, could have just simply written about the appearance of the star in their logbooks and went back to business. They could have thought it was just a comet or some type of supernova that appeared in the sky, something that was maybe significant but certainly not significant enough to warrant further investigation. But they knew it was something special. They knew that it was not just an ordinary star, that it was more than a comet. It was the marking of something momentous, something that the Magi knew would be greatly historical that would turn the world upside down, and they were right. The Magi were not content to just see the star and note it in their logbook. They were compelled by some external spiritual force to follow the star, to take an epic journey for parts unknown. Each and every day, God presents us with the opportunity to follow the star that he has placed within our lives, the star that comes to us through God's divine intervention and beckons us to go on a journey of faith. Are we willing to go? Are we ready and willing to follow that star? If we can learn anything from the story of the Magi, it is that something special is waiting out there for each of us, something special that will challenge our faith and change our faith for the better, but only if we let it. Where will your star take you? God has placed before all of us a star that will take us on an incredible journey. Are you ready and willing to begin your journey? Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the story of the Magi, their faithful determination to follow the star that you placed in their lives. Help us, dear God, to have that same faithful determination to follow the star you have placed in our lives. May we, lead, may we go wherever you lead us to go. May we trust in your divine providence, and may we not stop our journey until we have found the Christ. In your Son's holy name we pray. Amen.
God has placed a star in our life and calls us to follow that star wherever it may go. If you have heard God calling out to you to follow the path he has placed before you and would like to follow that path within our church, I invite you to come forward during our hymn of invitation. I have decided to follow Jesus. We will sing verses 1 and 2. Please stand. to end the service, so would you please stand for our benediction. Go out into the world in peace, following the star that God has placed in your life, trusting that it will lead you to exactly where God needs you to be. And may the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all now and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>